The President has received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the Social Security Legislation Amendment Streamline Participation Requirements and Other Measures Bill 2022 for concurrence. Uh, Minister. That this bill may proceed without formalities and be now read a first time. Uh, the question is the, bills, uh, the bill be now read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. For an act to amend the law relating to social security and for related purposes. Minister. I table a revised explanatory memorandum relating to the bill and move that this bill now be read a second time. And I seek leave to have the second reading speech incorporated in Hansard. Leave is granted. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Pratt. Thank you. Well, this bill certainly did need revising, but Labor is now in a position to support, support it. It, of course, seeks to streamline social security law in relation to job seeker payments under the new employment services model, uh, taking effect from the beginning of the new financial year. Labor was very concerned that the savings attributed to this bill uh, over the forward estimates were really going to come off the back of uh, job seekers and their access to social security <laughs> payments. However, uh, that has now been fixed in the House of Representatives along with a number of other key issues. We were at that time very concerned that the government was wanting to rush this through Parliament without proper consultation and scrutiny. I can now report that there's been a great deal of pressure on the government uh, and, as a result, the bill has now been amended and that, according to ACOS and those who have sought to influence the government, uh, we're now better off with this bill passing it rather than objecting to it. Uh, we note that last year the Employment and Education Legislation Committee had a very limited opportunity to inquire, and at that time it was rightly identified that shifting the start date for when payments were made to 10 days later on average, in conjunction to the shift on online services, would see uh, a massive cost to the hip pocket of job seekers, hitting Australians when they are most vulnerable. That schedule, Schedule 8, has now been removed and uh, a number of other amendments which have involved the Australian Council of Social Services, who I'd like to thank very much for standing up for the interests of Australians who uh, at various times in their life rely on uh, government social services payments. Um, uh, that the bill has now been successfully changed in the House of Representatives. It's clear from the outset that the government very much mishandled this bill. There was no rush uh, for the legislation last year, uh, and as Labor's highlighted earlier, the introduction of the new employment services model, which this bill supports, now only takes place in July this year. The government previously attempted to rush it, but you could not get your legislative agenda together. And now, at the death knell right before an election, we're finally in a position to pursue this bill. The important changes in this legislation deserved better consideration. The government did come to the conclusion that significant changes needed to happen to this legislation, and the government finally acted in the lower house. We in the Labor Party support an employment services system that is fair, a fair employment services system that also makes the most of technology to support both job seekers, employers and employment service providers. We do need to do more to get Australians into work especially for those who find themselves in long-term unemployment. This is the number which this long-term unemployment, despite what you might say about unemployment figures, has actually increased under this government. That is the number of Australians that have been looking for work for more than 12 months. This is a key challenge that this government is failing to address. More than four out of five of those who receive unemployment benefits are now classified as long-term unemployed. These Australians need more support. 
Of those Australians who are on unemployment benefits, 82 per cent have been on income support for more than a year. Labor is pleased to support the fact that this bill has changed, uh, as supported by ACOS, and we support the bill as amended. The Labor Party can be trusted to ensure that no job seeker is left behind. Thank you, Senator Pratt. Uh, Senator Rice. Thanks, Acting Deputy President. Josh Park Fing was 18 years old in April 2016. He was 18 years old when he accessed income support. He was 18 years old when his employment services provider sent him to a work site to collect rubbish. He was 18 years old when he died, after falling off the back of that truck. To Josh's family and friends, I know that the passage of time cannot dull your grief or diminish your pain. The aching gap of a missing life stays with us. And it was four years later, in 2020, that the government finally released the report inquiring into his death. Josh would have been 22 if he hadn't died that day on a site that was providing a work for the Dole program. It is important, as we debate this legislation today, to remember that this matters for people's lives across the country. I mean, it's easy for some of us to forget here in our air-conditioned building after a day of speeches and an evening of plenty to drink, plenty to eat. We have a moral obligation to those we represent and to a particularly a moral obligation to the people across Australia who have faced and continue to face a cruel and punitive system who have not received the support they need or they deserve. To people who have been forced to live below the poverty line by ministers who just do not know what it's like, who don't care about the impact on people's lives and who refuse to act. I mean, the very title of this bill, Streamlined Participation, it doesn't speak to people's experience of having to live with this system. It speaks to a bureaucracy of people just being cogs in the machine, of getting that machine working in a very streamlined way, of people being corralled through a heartless system. The Greens have got a different vision. We believe that no one should be living in poverty in a wealthy country where billionaires and big corporations are being subsidised by the government. I mean, in last night's budget, we saw the horrific figures of $38 billion being given in subsidies to coal and oil and gas companies, but cutting for cl funding for climate by 35 per cent. In a country that can afford to subsidise coal and gas and oil companies by $38 billion, we think we should be ensuring that no one lives in poverty, not looking after billionaires and big corporations. Interestingly, during the pandemic, we had a little experiment where governments worked to lift payments above the poverty line and ensured a strong, a strong safety net where it was needed, and they suspended mutual obligations. And so, for the Greens, that's what we think we should be doing permanently. We want to see a livable income guarantee that would lift people out of poverty and to abolish the punitive system of mutual obligations, Abol abolish these punitive measures from our social security system so it is genuinely and easily available to those who need it. So our vision is for a radically different income support system, one with a guaranteed livable income where people are treated humanely, not treated as just cogs in a machine. And let me be clear, the pandemic showed that this was possible. Poverty is a political choice, and it's a choice being made every day by ministers in the Liberal government who are earning six-figure salaries. The Greens have consistently raised significant concerns about the current bill. As outlined by my predecessor, Senator Rachel Seward, in the dissenting report on the inquiry into the bill, the Australian Greens are extremely disappointed by the rushed nature of the inquiry into the Social Security Legislation Amendment, Streamlined Participation Requirements and Other Measures Bill. This bill encompasses significant changes to employment services, mutual obligations and compliance for income support recipients. And unfortunately, stakeholders were only provided with a few business days to consider the bill and make submissions to the inquiry. This is wholly in inadequate for a suite of such significant changes, Senator Seawitt continued. While there are some positive changes, such as more flexibility and agency in creating a job plan, a number of the proposed changes do raise deep concerns and need more careful consideration. And I acknowledge that in the time since 
that um, Senator Seawitt wrote that dis dissenting report, there have been changes to this bill, and there have been changes made just yes in the House of Representatives. And I do want to note the work, particularly of the Australian Council of Social Services, in working to improve this bill. And we recognise that these amendments will improve this bill, and so we support those amendments. But I want to note, however, that even this process of these amendments has been rushed. And while I thank people you know, and thank those involved in their work to consult and the work that ACOS have put in, the amendments weren't introduced into the House of Representatives in their final form until today. I mean, we are pleased to see that the key measure, um, which was in Schedule 8, that would have taken more money from those that were really doing it the most, in the most difficult way, that's gone. And we're pleased to see greater protections for those who are principal carers and who have a partial capacity to work. And we welcome the guidelines, recognising that they reflect an amendment introduced by the Australian Greens. So we do think these are genuine improvements on the original bill and we support them. But I will note that we still have incredibly significant concerns about fundamental aspects of the employment services framework. I mean, based on our understanding, including of the draft delegated legislation, the framework is going to involve more people being forced into work for the dole, as participants are required to undertake it at the six-month mark rather than the one-year mark, and fewer people having the opportunity to actually engage with a human being. I mean, we recognise the improvements made by the amendments but we have still got really fundamental concerns about some of the most vulnerable people in our society who are forced to live below the poverty line, having their requirements dictated to them by an impersonal system. And the loss of people that job seekers who are going to have to interact with is profound. I received an email today from a person who works for what they describe as a high-performing employment agency who wanted to highlight to me what these changes will mean. On the issue of how many fewer people are going to be employed, real people, to engage with people looking for work, to give them the support that they need to create a human system, um, this person writing to me said it is estimated that from April this year, 15,000 frontline case manager employees, predominantly female, will also be looking for work. So there will be 15,000 fewer people being employed supporting job seekers. This person then continued, as an individual, my work every day is about changing people's lives through employment, helping job seekers to move off welfare payments and become active contributors to the local and national economy. The recent Australian government announcement of changes to established service providers will result in far-reaching disruption across the industry. It is highly likely that many of my colleagues will be made redundant. I worked for a high-performing provider that has failed to have their contracts for the rebranded Job Active Service renewed in my area. My colleagues and I would like to know why the government removed high-performing providers from the market at a time when employers are crying out for staff and many of the most vulnerable job seekers have an opportunity to take up work with our support and guidance. This unnecessary disruption to the market will impact employees like me, vulnerable job seekers already struggling to navigate the system, as well as local employers struggling to find workers. The changes are likely to result in poor performance for a long period and will cost the taxpayer millions. So fundamentally, we are still going to have a system that now is going to employ fewer people, providing less support, and yet with punitive measures of mutual obligation still being maintained. I mean, fundamentally, the whole model is wrong. Fundamentally, we should be supporting people to find work without punitive mutual obligations, to scrap that system entirely and provide genuine support for people without making people jump through useless hoops that actually don't help them to find work. And again, when mutual obligations were paused during the pandemic, in fact, it enabled more people to actually be doing to encourage people to be seeking work. They, didn't, they weren't having to jump through useless hoops to try and find work. So while we recognise the improvements that have been made to this, this bill, we still have fundamental concerns. 
and I would like to move my second reading amendment in relation to this bill that addresses some of those concerns. So, I mean, basically, we fundamentally do not think that the changes that are being proposed um, are enough to guarantee the protections that are needed for hundreds of thousands of Australians who are forced to interact with a system that is cruel, that is punitive and does not provide the support that people need or deserve. Now, I want to finish just by reflecting upon another woman that I met two weeks ago when we were launching our livable income guarantee pol policy that would lift people above the poverty line, give them $88 a day and abolish mutual obligations. We launched it outside the South Melbourne Centrelink. And this woman told us she was homeless, she was living on the streets, she had zero income, but she had decided that she was not going to even continue to try and engage with our social security system because she found it just too damaging to her mental health. She had poor mental health, she had anxiety, she said she should have been on the disability support pension, but that was impossible. And for her, it was the system was just too hard, too harsh, too punitive. It was making her more unwell to even engage with the system. So she had decided that she would prefer to have zero income and be living on the streets, being homeless, rather than forcing herself, making herself more unwell to engage with the system. I find this just absolutely heart-wrenching in a rich country of ours that we have, got, we have put people in this system. And this bill is not going to change that system to make it a system that would work for women like that. And so that is why the Australian Greens will be opposing this bill. Thank you, Senator Rice. Minister. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President. Uh, I thank all senators for their contribution to this bill this evening. And, uh, this bill modernises and streamlines social security law by reducing duplication and enabling job seekers who are, ready, uh, who are job ready the opportunity to self-manage their pathways to work using a digital platform, giving them more flexibility and choice. Uh, the bill enables a key element of the new employment service model, known as Workforce Australia. Workforce Australia aligns with recommendations made by the Employment Services Expert Advisory Panel report, I Want to Work, Employment Services 2020, which was the result of extensive stakeholder uh, consultation. Current social uh, security law is constraining uh, the government's ability to provide the best possible service to job seekers. For example, job seekers who want to enter study or training into their job plan need to call the Digital Services Contact Centre to talk uh, to a human delegate. This is an unnecessary burden on the hundreds of thousands of job seekers who are job ready and who can and should be allowed to manage their own requirements online. Uh, it is also worth clarifying that the amendments do not mean that employment services or approving job plans will in fact be automated or that job seekers are forced into a digital only pathway. Human oversight and assistance will remain an integral part of all employment services. At any time, a job seeker can contact a person in the Digital Service Contact Centre for assistance or opt uh, out of online services and agree their job plan with a human delegate at an employment service provider. However, responding to stakeholder concerns, the government has agreed to make amendments to require a digital protection framework be contained in a legislative instrument, providing greater assurance to stakeholders that employment services are administered ethically. Uh, it's important to note that protections within Schedule 8 would ensure that job seekers do not face delays in payment for reasons beyond their control. However, the government does not wish the passage of other important improvements to the social security law to be delayed, including changes to support the new model. Accordingly, the government had agreed to move amendments to remove Schedule 8 from the bill. This bill, colleagues and Mr Acting Deputy President, will significantly modernise and streamline social security law while maintaining existing protections and providing crucial support for the new employment services model. And for all these reasons, I commend this bill to the chamber. Uh, thank you, Minister. The question before the chair is the second reading amendment moved by Senator Rice on sheet 1579. Those who agree with that amendment uh, say aye. aye. Those against say no. no. 
I think the noes have it. So a division required. Ring the bells for four minutes, please. Lock the doors. The question is that the second reading amendment moved by Senator Rice on sheet 1579 be agreed to. The ayes will move to the right of the chairs, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator McKim, teller for the ayes, and Senator Urquhart, teller for the noes.
there being eight ayes and 27 noes, the question is resolved in the negative. The question is now that this bill be read a second time. Those of that opinion say aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. A bill for an act to amend the law relating to social security and for related purposes. Now, I'm in the hands of the chamber in relation to whether we do need to go into a committee stage. I do understand that some amendments had been circulated. I'm just looking. Senator Rice. The Australian Greens amendments we're withdrawing. So, if they, yes, if okay. I need to formally withdraw them, so we don't need to go into committee on our behalf. So those amendments are formally withdrawn and leave is granted uh, for that. I call the minister to move the third reading. This bill now be read a third time. The question is the bill now be read a third time. Those with that opinion say aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. Social Security. Oh, sorry, Senator Rice. The vote of the Greens against the, the bill be recorded, please. The, the vote of In the Greens against the, the bill will, will be recorded. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Rice. Clark. A bill for an act to amend the law relating to Social Security and for related purposes. Government Business Order of the Day, Social Services and Other Legislation Amendment Pension Loans Scheme Enhancements Bill 2021, resumption of second reading debate. No. Oh, oh, sorry, Senator Dodson. The President has received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the Social Services and Other Legislation Amendment Pension Loan Schemes Enhancement Bill 2021 for concurrence. Minister. I move that this bill may proceed without formalities and now be read a first time. Uh, the question is that this bill now be read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. Bill for an act to amend the law relating to Social Security and veterans entitlements and for related purposes. Minister. I move that this bill now be read a second time and I seek leave to have the second reading speech incorporated into Hansard. Is uh, leave approved? Granted. Yes, uh, leave is approved. Um, uh, Senator Dodson, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Um, I uh, rise to speak uh, to the Social Securities and Other Legislation Amendment, Pensions Loan Scheme and Enhancement Bill 2001. And I move an amendment to uh, this bill on sheet uh, 1588, circulated in my name. The Pension Loan Scheme allows older Australians uh, to get a loan from the Australian Government to supplement their retirement income. This important social security uh, program is a legacy of the Hawke Government, offering older Australians the opportunity to tap into their home equity and unlock cash for an improved standard of living. Despite the benefits of the scheme, Take-up rates for the scheme have been very, very low. Only around 5,000 participants currently access the scheme. This is against a potential 4 million senior Australians of uh, pension age, including around 2.6 million aged pensioners, of which 80 per cent are homeowners. The lack of take-up is primarily because of the barriers to access. These barriers are well known and have been known for the nine years of this government. Labor welcomed and supported previous changes made in 2018, but clearly more needs to be done. And these latest changes have come too late. Pensioners won't be fooled by this government its last-minute attempt to support them. Pensioners know that this government has tried to cut the age pension and reduce their living standards at every possible opportunity. In the 2014 budget, they cut $1 billion from pensioners' concessions. They axed 900 senior supplements to self-funded retirees 
and they tried to reset the deeming rate threshold and cut pension indexation. In 2015, they did a deal with the Greens to change the pension assets test, cutting the pension to around the pension to around 370,000 pensioners by as much as 12,000 a year. In the 2016 budget, they tried to cut the pension to around 190 pensioners as part of a plan to limit overseas travel for pensioners to six weeks and cut the pension to over 1.5 million Australians by scrapping the energy supplement for new pensioners. The government also spent five years trying to increase the pension age to 70, spiralling out of pocket health care costs and a bigger concerns for older Australians. And these have come about because of the Medicare freeze put in, put in place by the Morrison government. Pensioners know, and they're not fooled, that they can't trust this government to protect their living standards and act to offset rising costs. Senator Dodson. We'll ask you to resume your seat. Thank you. I'll inform the chamber that the time allotted for the debate on the bills has now expired. In accordance with resolution agreed earlier today, I will now put the question before the chair and then put the questions on the remaining stages of the bill listed in the resolution. The question before the chair is second reading amendment on sheet 1588, circulated by the opposition. The question is that that amendment be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. Aye. The noes have it. Aye. Ring the bells.
You got a you got a few seconds. You got a few seconds. All right, we'll need to lock the doors. Question is that second reading amendment on sheet 1588 be agreed to. Eyes are passed to the right of the chair, nose to the left. I appoint Senator Urquhart, teller for the eyes. Senator Davey, teller for the nose. The result of the division is ayes 25, noes 28. The question is resolved in the negative. The question is now. I'll allow managers to resume their seats. The question is now that the bill be read a second time. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. An act to amend the law relating to social security and veterans entitlements and for related purposes. The question is now that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bill be now passed. Those that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. Clark. Bill for an act to amend the law relating to social security and veterans entitlements and for related purposes. I would encourage senators to remain a little quiet, and we will seek to have one-minute divisions if it is agreed with the whips as we go. I'll now deal with the Social Security Amendment, Improved Child to Adult Transfer for Carer Payment and Carer Allowance Bill 2022. I, re I, re I have received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the bill for concurrence. Minister. It will now be read a first time. The question is that the bill now be read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. Clark. Bill for an act to amend the Social Security Act 1991 and for related purposes. I will now call the minister to move the second reading. Minister. I will now oh, that's yours. <laughs> I move that this bill now be read a second time. The question is that the bill be now. Ah, second reading I will now deal with the second reading amendment circulated by the opposition. Sheet uh, the question is that the second reading amendment on sheet 1592, circulated by the opposition, be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. Aye. The noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute.
Lock the doors. The question is the second reading amendment be agreed to. Eyes are passed to the right of the chair, nose to the left. I appoint Senator Urquhart, teller for the eyes, and Senator Davey, teller for the nose. There being 25 ayes, 28 noes, the question is resolved in the negative. The question is now that the bill be read a second time. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. A bill for an act to amend the Social Security Act 1991 and for related purposes. The question is now that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bill be now passed. Those that opinion say aye. aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. Clark. If an act to amend the Social Security Act 1991 and for related purposes. I shall now move to the National Security Legislation Amendment, Comprehensive Review and Other Measures No. 1, Bill 2021. I have received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the bill for concurrence. Minister. I move that the bill now be read a first time. The question is that the bill now be read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. Aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. Bill for an act to amend the law relating to national security and intelligence services and for related purposes. The question is now that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bill be now passed. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. One minute. Lock the doors. The question is that the remaining stage of the bill be agreed to and the bill be passed. Eyes are passed to the right of the chair, nose to the left. I appoint Senator Davey, teller for the eyes, and Senator McKim, teller for the nose.
The result of the division is ayes 42, noes 8. The question is resolved in the affirmative. I call the clerk. A bill for an act to amend the law relating to national security and intelligence services and for related purposes. We now move to the Security Legislation Amendment, Critical Infrastructure Protection Bill 2022. I have received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the bill for concurrence. Minister. The bill now be read a first time. The question is that the bill be read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. <laughs> Against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. Bill for an act to amend legislation relating to critical infrastructure and for other purposes. I will now deal with the government amendments circulated to the bill. I understand there is a supplementary explanatory memorandum and an addendum to be presented, and I call the minister. I table the supplementary explanatory memorandum and addendum relating to the government amendments to this bill. Question is that the amendments on sheet SU158 circulated by the government be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The question is now that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bill be now passed. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. Lock the doors. The question is that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bill be passed. Ayes will pass to the right of the chair, noes to the left. I appoint Senator Davey, teller for the ayes. Senator McKim, teller for the noes. The result of the division is ayes 45, noes 8. The question is resolved in the affirmative. I call the clerk.
bill for an act to amend legislation relating to critical infrastructure and for other purposes. We now move to the National Disability Insurance Scheme Amendment, Participants Service Guarantee and Other Measures Bill 2022. I have received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the bill for concurrence. Minister. We read a first time. The question is that the bill now be read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. Can say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. Act to amend the National Disability Insurance Scheme Act 2013 and for related purposes. I understand there is a revised explanatory memorandum to be presented and I call the minister. I table a revised explanatory memorandum relating to the bill. I will now deal with the amendments circulated by the Australian Greens. The question is that the amendment circulated by the Australian Greens on sheet 1494 revised 1506 revised and 1530 revised be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Again, say no. Aye. The noes have it. Division required. I did only hear one voice. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. The question is that amendment circulated by Australian Greens on sheets 1494 revised, 1506 revised, 1530 revised be agreed to. Ayes will pass to the right of the chair, noes will pass to the left. I appoint Senator McKim, teller for the ayes, and Senator Urquhart, teller for the noes. There being nine ayes, 29 noes, the question is resolved in the negative. The question now is that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bill be now passed. Those that opinion say aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. 
a bill for an act to amend the National Disability Insurance Scheme Act 2013 and for related purposes. Senator Steelejohn speaking. Sorry, Senator Steelejohn. Just want to clarify something. Could I just ask a question of clarification? So, in terms of what just happened before the chair, there were all of my amendments before you at once. Yes. In one lot. Okay, and they all went down. Okay. I mean, not good, but thank you. <laughs> Depends on your perspective, Senator Steele, John. Now, you, had you concluded, Richard? Uh, I will now deal with the road vehicle standards consequential and transitional provisional provisions amendment bill 2022. The question is that the bill be now read a second time. Those of that opinion say aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. For an act to amend the Road Vehicle Standards Consequential and Trans Transitional Provisions Act 2018 and for related purposes. The question is now that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bill be now passed. Those of that opinion say aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. To amend the Road Vehicle Standards Consequential and Transitional Provisions Act 2018 and for related purposes. We now move to the Australian Research Council Amendment Bill 2021. I have received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the bill for concurrence. Minister. You read it first time. The question is that the bill be read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. Bill for an act to amend the Australian Research Council Act 2001 and for related purposes. The question is now that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bill be now passed. Those of that opinion say aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. Bill for an act to the Australian Research Council Act 2001 and for related purposes. We now move to the Data Availability and Transparency Bill 2022 and the Data Availability and Transparency Consequential Amendments Bill 2020. I have received messages from the House of Representatives forwarding the bills for concurrence. Minister. We read a first time. The question is the bills will now be read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. Clark. Data Availability and Transparency Bill 2022, Data Availability and Trans Transparency Consequential Amendments Bill 2020. I understand there is a, that a revised explanatory memorandum will be presented. I call the Minister. I table the revised explanatory memorandum relating to the bills. I now deal with the government amendments which were circulated after 6.12 pm. Leave will be required for the amendments to be moved. Is a, seek, uh, is a senator seeking leave to have the amendments dealt with? Uh, is leave granted? Thank you, Minister. Is leave granted? There being no objection, leave is granted. Minister? Move the amendments. Question is the amendments on sheet ZD126 moved by the Minister be agreed to? Those of that opinion say aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. Senator McKim. Thank you. In the interest of time, could I ask that the Greens' opposition to these amendments be recorded, please? Certainly, Senator McKim. We appreciate uh, handling things that way. The question is now that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bills be now passed. Those of that opinion say aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. One minute.
lock the doors. Uh, the question is that the remaining stage of the bills be agreed to and the bills be now passed. Eyes are passed to the right of the chair, no's to the left. I appoint Senator Davey, teller for the ayes, and Senator McKim, teller for the noes. The result of the division is ayes 28, noes 9. The question is resolved in the affirmative. And I call the clerk. Data Availability and Transparency Bill 2022. Data Availability and Transparency Consequential Amendments Bill 2020. We now move to the offshore petroleum laminaria and Coralina decommissioning costs recovery levy bill 2021 and the Treasury Laws Amendment Laramarina and Cor Coralina decommissioning cost recovery levy bill 2021. Should have practiced those in advance, shouldn't I? I've received messages from the House of Representatives forwarding the bill for concurrence. Minister. First time. Question is that the bills be now read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Uh, I call the clerk. Offshore Petroleum, Laminaria and Coralina Decommissioning Cost Recovery Levy Bill 2021. Treasury Laws Amendment, Laminaria and Coralina Decommissioning Cost Recovery Levy Bill 2021. Better you than me. The question is now that the remaining stages of the bills be agreed to and the bills be now passed. Those that opinion say aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clerk. Offshore Petroleum, Laminaria and Coralina Decommissioning Cost Recovery Levy Bill 2021. Treasury Laws Amendment, Laminaria and Coralina Decommissioning Cost Recovery Levy Bill 2021. We now move to the Criminal Code Amendment Firearms Trafficking Bill 2022. I have received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the bill for concurrence. Minister. Read a first time. Question is that the bill be now read a first time. Those that opinion say aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clerk. A bill for an act to amend the Criminal Code Act 1995 and for related purposes. I will now call on the minister to move the second reading. Minister. Oh, I move that the bill now be read a second time. The question is that the bill be now read a second time. Those of that opinion say aye. Oh, no, sorry, we do have a second reading amendment to deal with. The question is that the second reading amendment on sheet 1583, circulated by the Australian Greens, be agreed to. So, to be clear, second reading amendment on sheet 1583. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. no. The noes have it. Senator McKim. Um, could I just seek to have the Australian Greens uh, votes quite obviously in favour of our amendment recorded? Thank you, Senator McKim. The question is now that the bills be read a second time. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clerk. To amend the Criminal Code 1995 and for later purposes. Question is now that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bill be now passed. Those of that opinion say aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clerk. To amend the Criminal Code Act 1995 and for related purposes. 
We now move to the Aged Care and Other Legislation Amendment, Royal Commission Response No. 2, Bill 2021, starting with the second reading amendments circulated to the bill. Question is that the second reading amendment on sheet 1484, revised, circulated by the Australian Greens, be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. Aye. The noes have it. The noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes. I think I'm still going. Lock the doors. The question is, second reading amendment on sheet 181484, revised, circulated by the Australian Greens, be agreed to. Ayes are passed to the right of the chair. Noes are passed to the left. I appoint Senator Urquhart to tell her for the ayes. Senator Davey, tell her for the noes.
There being 28 ayes, 26 noes, the question is resolved in the affirmative. I will now move to second reading amendment on sheet 1497, circulated by the opposition. Uh, question is that motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. One minute. Lock the doors. Question is the second reading amendment on sheet 1497 as circulated by the opposition be agreed to. Eyes will pass to the right of the chair, nose to the left. I appoint Senator. I appoint Senator Urquhart, teller for the ayes, and Senator Davey, teller for the noes. There being 28 ayes, 26 noes, the question is resolved in the affirmative. The question is now that the bills be read a second time. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. For an act to amend the law relating to aged care, health and aged care pricing and information sharing in relation to veterans and mil military rehabilitation and compensation and for related purposes. I will now deal with the amendments circulated to the bill. I understand the Australian Greens intend to withdraw their committee stage amendments on sheet 1483 revised. Is a senator seeking leave to withdraw? Yes, I wish to withdraw. The Thank you. Is leave granted. Leave is granted. I'll now deal with the government amendments to the bill. I understand there is a supplementary explanatory memoration, memor memorandum and an, an addendum to be presented. I call the minister. I table a supplementary explanatory memorandum and an addendum relating to the government amendments to the bill. I'll now deal with the government amendments circulated on sheet ZC194. Uh, 194 is what I've got. 
apologise. One four nine. The question, first question is that items 106 of Schedule 1 and items 50 to 63 and 134 of Schedule 8 stand as printed. Those of that opinion say aye. Against say no. The noes have it. The noes have it. The question now is that the remaining amendments to the on sheet ZC149 circulated by the government be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Again say no. The ayes have it. I'll now deal with the amendments circulated by the Centre Alliance and Senator Patrick, starting with, starting with sheet 1509 revised. The question is that Schedule 9 stand as printed. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The question is now that the remaining amendment on sheet 1509 revised be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Again, say no. Aye. The noes have it. The noes have it. The question is now that the amendments on sheet 1455 revised Three circulated by Senator Patrick be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. no. Oh. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. <laughs> the question now is that the amendments on sheet 1458 circulated by the Centre Alliance be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The question is now that the remaining stages of the bill be agreed to and the bill be now passed. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clerk. A bill for an act to amend the law relating to aged care, health and aged care pricing and information sharing in relation to veterans and military rehabilitation and compensation and for related purposes. Thank you, Senators. We now, in accordance with the resolution agreed to earlier today, proceed to further consideration of the Mitochondrial Donation Law Reform, Maeve's Law Bill 2021, in committee as a whole. I will ask the Deputy President to step into the chair, and I'll give Senators a moment to quietly clear the chamber. Considering the mitochondrial donation law reform Maves Law Bill 2021 and amendments 1 to 9 on sheet 1518, moved by Senator Canavan. The question is Are you seeking the call, Senator O'Sullivan? Yep. Madam uh, Deputy President, uh, just so we're up to date with uh, what we're dealing with here, colleagues, uh, this is the amendment uh, related to that was moved by Senator Canavan, but in his absence, I'm uh, just will speak briefly on it. Uh, this deals with the, the techniques, the two techniques that uh, the bill proposes, and it effectively removes one of those techniques, still allowing the research and the procedures to go forward, but uh, in a limited way. Uh, so, the uh, the techniques, uh, for example, the pronuclear transfer technique, the for mitochondrial donation result in the creation of two zygotes or, or embryos. Uh, the zygote that is left with the defective mitochondria is then discarded. Uh, this raises, of course, the ethical issue of the creation of life, that is, a zygote as a tool or instrument to help another life. Uh, this life is created with the knowledge that it will be destroyed. And the Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference uh, said about these techniques that the disposing of any human embryos, because such actions would instrumentalise human embryos, treating them as part of a production process 
where they could be kept or disposed of subject to arbitrary judgments. Uh, so this amendment uh, removes the, uh, deals with that uh, technique that involves the transfer of mitochondria after the creation of an embryo so as to not create embryos for the destruction uh, for their destruction. This amendment removes the pronuclear transfer and second polar body transfer techniques as approved methods. Uh, if this amendment passes, the, the research and clinical practice would continue. It would continue. So, if you vote for this amendment, uh, it doesn't mean that you're uh, voting against uh, the, uh, the research in, in this field, but it does deal with that, uh, I guess, pro-life aspect of uh, uh, the technique that some might have some ethical issues with. Uh, so, uh, the techniques that transfer mitochondria between the prospective mothers and donors and donors' eggs uh, before the creation of life, uh, that's, what it's, that's what it's dealing with. These techniques, as I said, avoid the ethical controversy over whether a human life should be created simply as a tool uh, to help another life. Uh, some argue that the embryonic uh, methods have shown more chance of success and therefore if we remove them from the bill we would materially reduce the chance of a successful mitochondrial donation occurring. Well, uh, that's, that's not correct. Uh, a recent report in the Annual Review of Genomics and Human Genetics me uh, Medical Journal found that there had been three births, uh, one in Mexico, one in Greece and one in Ukraine, uh, using the techniques permitted by this bill. Uh, two of these live births uh, use the techniques that actually do not destroy embryos. So two-thirds uh, were uh, weren't, uh, were, were, would still be permitted uh, if this amendment was to, to go through. Uh, Two-thirds uh, of the births uh, so far have used pro-life techniques. Uh, only one of these births was performed uh, for mitochondrial donation. Uh, the others were transferring material to overcome some fertility issues. and That birth was uh, using a method that does not destroy the embryo. Uh, so there's no evidence that these amendments would restrict the development of the mitochondrial donation services, given uh, the evidence that uh, pro-life, non-destructive evidence uh, can work. And so, uh, colleagues, uh, you, uh, if you support uh, research uh, in this field, uh, you can actually vote for this, and that research would be able to continue. But if you do have ethical issues with uh, the use of embryos that by their creation are designed to uh, ultimately to be destroyed, uh, then this amendment would uh, uh, eliminate that possibility and remove that as, a, as an option as far as the research and, um, and use of these techniques going forward. So uh, I do encourage you to support uh, the, the, this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Senator O'Sullivan. As Senator O'Neill. Uh, thank you very much. And I'd like to associate myself with the remarks just put on the record by Senator O'Sullivan. I also want to acknowledge uh, Senator Canavan moving this amendment. And um, for, for those who might be listening and just picking up the debate, and perhaps for senators who are here at this late hour and hoping that it won't be too, too late an hour by the time we depart, I, I just want to make some um, general remarks about the nature of this debate. This, this is a debate that is informed by conscience. And happily, we live in an Australia where there is the freedom to practice our religion, although we have recently been unable to pass through this parliament discrimination, uh, legislation to pre prevent discrimination against people of faith. Nonetheless, as a senator from the Australian Labor Party, uh, it was determined at our caucus that this matter would be a free vote on conscience. Uh, my conscience on these matters that we are debating about the sanctity of human life are informed by the great uh, theological tradition, the language and the, the uh, practices and beliefs of the Catholic faith. That is only one faith among many. There are many people of other faiths who share the views that I'm going to express with my vote today in support of the arguments that were just put um, so cogently and succinctly by Senator O'Sullivan. But there are people of no faith who also share these views about the protection of human life and embryos. And that is why this is such an important vote and a debate. I am very appreciative of my Labor colleagues and the Labor caucus 
in making sure that this evening, although there could have been the option considered to truncate the, the, the debate and to guillotine the, 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 the debate, that we are going to be allowed to debate long into the night, although that is not my intention. We will, we will actually prosecute this, I hope, quite efficiently because I think we know where it's going to land. Nonetheless, it's important. It's important for this parliament to preserve the right to people of faith to exercise their conscience in matters of life in particular. And that's why this particular amendment is one I wholly endorse and support. And I hope those who hold that worldview, whether it's informed by faith, uh, another um, form of morality and decision making in their own life, that they will also support Mr. Uh, Senator Canavan's amendment that's up for discussion right now. Thank you. So the question is that amendments one to seven be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Against, I believe it's carried. I'm now going. Sorry. Well, no one stood. Well, I, I'll put it again. Someone needs to take the call. Senator Keneally. Thank you. I, I, I don't wish to prolong the debate. I just wanted to make a very short contribution, indicate my support for the amendments, and associate myself with the remarks of Senator O'Neill. Um, and say I think it's incredibly important we do have this debate as a debate, not as a guillotine, and acknowledge uh, that that has what the Senate has achieved tonight. Um, it, and I join myself with Senator O'Neill in acknowledging we do not want to prolong this debate. Um, I think it's important to recognise that there are, um, that throughout this debate it has been conducted respectfully. Um, and while I won't belabour the points, if the Senate would just indulge me for a moment, um, this is my last day in the Senate, um, and uh, of course, uh, and uh, given that I will be contesting the House in, in, in the, uh, the House of Representatives, and on that, I, if I could just have a moment on a personal reflection to say that Senator O'Neill and I first met in 2002 when we both first stood as state candidates uh, in a state election. Uh, and uh, I find it quite a nice, nice that here, almost 20 years later, uh, to be uh, standing with her because the thing we had in common from that point is a passion for the Labor Party and a passion for uh, the Catholic social justice principles and ensuring that people of faith had a voice in our party. So I'm very proud tonight to associate myself with her uh, after the 20 years we've spent working together, and I look forward to doing it in a hopefully a Labor government. Uh, but more to the point, um, I think it's important we have these debates. I think it's important that these views be put and why I acknowledge that the, based on the numbers and the fact that there are some people who are not able to be here tonight to uh, vote um, in the way they did a few weeks ago um, due to illness and other reasons. Um, and perhaps in a moment, Senator O'Neill might want to acknowledge our colleague, Senator Kitching, who would have made a contribution and a vote in this debate. Um, I, I want to thank Senator O'Sullivan for taking on Senator Canavan's amendments and making sure that we have the opportunity to express our views to them. Senator Scar. Thank you, Madam Deputy President. I didn't have the benefit of being here uh, when this matter was discussed uh, due to uh, a close family member having COVID, so I had to be in isolation. Can I firstly uh, say to my colleagues in the chamber that I watched the debate very carefully from afar, and I was extraordinarily impressed uh, with the, the decency uh, with which, and respect with which the arguments were prosecuted. Uh, I uh, have struggled with this bill, and uh, in many respects I have sought to try and convince myself to vote uh, for the bill unamended. But at the end of the day, I simply struggle on an ethical basis, uh, not informed by any religious perspective, uh, but I struggle on an ethical basis with the notion that one should create an embryo with the intention that it will be um, part of it will be transferred and the balance destroyed and hence. I feel obliged as a matter of conscience 
to uh, support this amendment. And I must say, Senator Keneally, in particular, I listened to your contributions very carefully uh, during the, uh, the last sitting, uh, and I found your arguments uh, extraordinarily convincing. So the question is that amendments one to seven be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? No. I believe the noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes. <coughs>
Lock the doors. So the question in that is that amendments one to seven be agreed to. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair. The noes to the left. I appoint Senator Chandler as seller for the ayes and Senator Urquhart as seller for the noes. Senator Sheldon, you can't move once the count has started. Order. There being 21 ayes and 29 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. I'll just move to the second part of that amendment. So the question is that sections 7D and 7G in item 20 of Schedule 1 stand as printed. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? I believe the ayes have it. The ayes have it. I'm waiting for someone to seek the call. <clears throat> Senator O'Neill. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy President. And I seek leave to move the amendment uh, number one on sheet 1541. Thank you. Um, you don't need leave, Senator. So you're thank moving you very that. Much. Thank you. I, I move. The amendment standing in my name on sheet 1541. And um, this is simply a, a, a brief, a small amendment that seeks to uh, prevent immunity from civil action. Um, it's, it's a matter, of course, that we are debating a, a quite a significant change to the law. And as we've been discussing in some of these divisions, the creeping nature of this piece of legislation, which 20 years ago we were unwilling to move. And I see um, senators who are on the committee with me where we undertook this inquiry, uh, who understand the portent of what we're undertaking tonight. Ultimately, history will reveal what it is that we have done. Uh, and I I have fears and concerns, and that's why I'm putting these amendments to provide a degree of protection uh, that I think we should be cautiously advancing with. Uh, this particular amendment I urge you to support is an immunity from civil actions that I don't think that researchers should be protected from. Uh, if this is such great and unrisky technology, then there should be no protection. Thank you. So the question is? that um, amendment one on sheet 1541 is moved by Senator O'Neill be agreed to or beg your pardon stand as printed. Those of that opinion say aye. 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 Against? I believe the ayes have it. Oh, do I, I'll put it again. I'm going to put that again. So the question is that 
Section 47A in item 103 of Schedule 1 stand as printed. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? No. I believe the ayes have it. Division required? Do you want the bells rung for four minutes? Four minutes. One minute. Ring the bells for one minute. Thank you. Lock the doors. <clears throat> so the question is that section 47A in item 103 of Schedule 1 stand as printed. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Urquhart to sell up the ayes and Senator Ciccone as sell up the noes. Order. There being 30 ayes and 21 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. I'll just allow senators to resume their places. Yeah, I beg your pardon, I believe I said negative, I meant affirmative. Sorry, Senator O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Deputy President. Um, and I move. The amendment circulated in my name one to three on sheet fifteen seventy six by leave together. Is leave granted? Yes, leave is granted. Thank, Thank you, you, Senator um, The last couple of amendments that we've considered are ones that really do go to a matter of conscience. I ask those who have made up 
their minds um, on their conscience to date. Just to look at this as legislators, this is more of a technical amendment in my view, and I, I hope that you might be persuaded by the argument that, in fact, uh, the mitochondrial donation research in the UK was, in fact, legalised in 2015. It began in one laboratory in Newcastle in 2016, and at this point of time, as we make this very important decision, there is absolutely no data available, no data, after six years of research, available to Australians. That is very, very concerning to me. We don't know whether experiments have happened. We don't know what the experiments produced. We don't know, in fact, if there are any pregnancies. Despite the hope that is held out, we don't know if there have been any live births. We don't know how, if there have been any unexpected difficulties or challenges. None of that has been made available to inform our decisions here. As the Australian Mito Bill is broadly modelled on the UK law, and we are doing this on the back of reported success that is unobservable, it's reasonable, I believe, to expect that the results in the UK experiments are at the very least available to the NHMRC's Embryo Research Licensing Committee. This amendment does not only advance a position that I hold, but supports the work of Senator Canavan to introduce stronger and more frequent reporting guidelines for this technology. And, and Senators, whatever your conscience may tell you, I would put to you that this is just sensible legislative caution that requires our best attention because this is about getting the facts on the record, using the facts and the evidence from the only other jurisdiction that has advanced this piece of technology. So I seek your support for this amendment. Senator Stoker, I think uh, you probably should be in your own seat. Thank you. Senator Stoker. Madam Deputy President, I wondered if I might direct a question to Senator O'Neill um, to help us understand the import of this amendment. Is the purpose of it to ensure that any Australian research is made available and transparent? Or is the purpose of the amendment to provide um, some sort of requirement for the British data to be made available? The reason I ask is that it seems to me that we don't have the authority to require that certain information be provided of a foreign government's health bodies. Um, if, however, it were to be structured in such a way that it was more directed at um, our own decision to be transparent about the way that we reported this data, then I would have thought it's both within power and something worth doing. So if you could help me understand that, I would appreciate it very much. Senator O'Neill. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deputy President. Um, infusing the two pieces together from Senator Canavan and myself in this amendment, um, it requests that UK data be made available to the NHMRC and it also seeks to encourage the Australian data to be made available because currently this is incredibly opaque. Senator Stoker. Thank you, um, Madam Deputy President. Just so that I understand fully, um, does that mean that the failure of British authorities to provide information um, in response to that request would provide some barrier to the ability of research in Australia to proceed? Or would a request not met, um, in a sense, fall away? Senator O'Neill. As I understand it, this would require the NHMRC to access that data from the UK. And given the closeness of the association between what's been go what, what, the way in which that has been integrated at the moment, I believe that it would not be an impediment. So the question is that amendments one and two. Oh, beg your pardon. Are you seeking? Okay. So the question is that amendments one and two be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against. Aye. I believe the noes have it. Division required. Uh, ring the bells for one minute. People happy with one? Yes. Thank you.
Lock the doors. So the question is that amendments one and two be agreed to. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Chandler as teller for the ayes and Senator Urquhart as teller for the noes. Order, there being 21 ayes and 31 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. And now, uh, Senator O'Neill, are you happy for me to put that second part of that? Yep. So the question is that amendment 55A of Schedule 1 stand as printed. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? No. I believe the ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. Lock the doors. So the question is that <clears throat> item 55A of Schedule 1 stand as printed. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Davey as teller for the ayes and Senator Ciccone as teller for the noes. I'm with you. Oops.
Order. There being 31 ayes and 21 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. Just give senators a few moments to get back to their seats. Senator O'Neill. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, just before I move the next amendment, if I can, Chair, uh, Deputy President, I'd just like to indicate that there are a number of senators who. Um, who were highly engaged in this debate previously, who were unable to be here. Senator Dunningham, Senator Farrell, um, Senator Fiavanti Wells, and of course um, Senator Polly, Senator Stirl, and um, most sadly, as well, Senator Canavan, I've, I think I've already acknowledged early on because he was very instrumental in leading, but of course Senator Kitching. Um, and I do want to acknowledge uh, from the Labor team that there was a, an arrangement to make sure that her vote counted and, um, and an arrangement was made to honour her particular voting pattern. So I, 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 thank, them. I thank my colleagues for that. Um, finally, if I can just make a general point that while the government failed to get the anti-discrimination bill through for, against religious discrimination, it has chosen to bring this particular very contentious bill to the Senate this evening. It's really one minute to midnight, and here we are discussing an issue of great importance to Australians, particularly Australians of faith. But as Senator um, Scar has indicated, uh, you don't have to have a particular faith position to hold a humanist view and, and to vote with the amendments that I'm putting forward. Um, the amendment that I seek to move now, um, Deputy President, is sheet 1574. And, uh, this is an amendment. It calls for a clear and unambiguous measure of a successful test of compatibility um, before approval is granted. It will minimise the potential transmission of mito disease from the mother to the child. And there is recent research that shows strong evidence from large human population samples that uh, mitochondrial and nuclear genomes are under selective pressure for compatibility, and so they can't be safely mixed and matched without impunity between eggs from different women. The amendment is a response to that recent research. It's a measure to ensure efficacy of this experimental technology for both the safety of the mother and the child, and I urge senators to support the amendment. Thank you, Senator O'Neill. Uh, Minister, Senator Birmingham. Thank, thank, thanks, Chair and Chair. Just uh, very briefly on this, uh, I would indicate and encourage opposition to this amendment. Um, uh, I'm advised that there's no known test in relation to the type of genome compatibility uh, that this amendment would seek to require uh, between two people in the way in which it is presented, uh, and it's not clear how the requirement could in fact be adhered to in the context of which this amendment is put forward. Uh, I understand the intent that, uh, that Senator O'Neill uh, is seeking to achieve. Um, uh, but uh, in terms of the first phase of operations under this Act, under the, uh, the trial periods, uh, this would be uh, an amendment uh, that potentially would uh, have adverse consequences in terms of the ability of the Act to, uh, to it, or the bill to achieve its objectives were it to pass into law. Thank you, Minister. So the question is that the amendments uh, one on sheet 1574, as moved by Senator O'Neill, be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Against? No. Uh, I believe the noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. Lock the doors. So the question is that uh, 
Amendment 1 on sheet 1574, as moved by Senator O'Neill, be agreed to. Senators need to be seated. I'm just about to call the tellers, Senator Wish Wilson. Um, the ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Davey as teller for the ayes and Senator Urquhart as teller for the noes. Order. There being 21 ayes and 31 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. Senator O'Neill. Thank you. Not long to go now, colleagues. Um, the next amendment is uh, 1 to 11 on sheet 1578. By leave, together. I'll just ask leave granted to move these amendments together. Yes, leave is granted, Senator O'Neill. Um, this amendment seeks to explicitly and unequivocally specify that mitochondrial techniques are solely licensed to be used for transfers between the egg or the zygote of a woman who is suffering mito disease to the egg or zygote of a healthy woman. Um, and it would seem obvious that it's implied in the name of the legislation, but in reality, Clarity is required, and I would urge you to support this amendment because it is essential. There is a great likelihood that some IVF clinics in other jurisdictions um, who claim to have used mitochondrial transfer techniques have used that to treat general infertility, especially in older women whose eggs are you know, necessarily older. So uh, this seeks to be very explicit that this procedure is solely for the use of uh, response to mitochondrial uh, disease. Thank you, Senator O'Neill. Minister. Thanks, uh, thanks Chair. Uh, Chair, I'm advised that, uh, that this amendment is, uh, is, in fact, a less stringent limitation in terms of uh, requirements than the bill already provides for. Uh, that, uh, that before a mitochondrial donation technique can be used under the bill, the trial participant or patient must be approved by the NHMRC licensing committee under new section 28P of the Research Involving Human Embryos Act 2002. An approval can only be granted if, among other things, uh, under paragraphs 28P4A and B, uh, the trial participant or patient has a particular risk of their offspring inheriting mitochondria that would predispose them to mitochondrial disease and uh, there is a significant risk that the mitochondrial disease that would develop would result in a serious illness or other serious medical condition. Uh, the existing provisions in the bill uh, are more stringent indeed uh, than this, which would provide potentially a less stringent limitation or an element of confusion to the bill. Uh, and, uh, and with that, I would, uh, would encourage the Senate uh, to uh, oppose the proposed amendment. So the question is that amendments 1 to 11 on sheet 1578, moved by Senator O'Neill with leave. The question is that the amendments be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? 
I believe the noes have it. Uh, ring, division required. Ring the bells for one minute. Lock the doors. So the question <coughs> is that amendments 1 to 11 on sheet 1578 moved by leave by Senator O'Neill. The question is that the amendments be agreed to. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Davey as teller for the ayes and Senator Urquhart as teller for the noes. Order. There being 21 ayes and 31 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. <coughs> Senator O'Neill. Thank you, um, Madam Deputy President. Uh, I now seek to put, ask to put the amendments 1 and 2 on sheet 1575 by leave together. Is leave granted? There being no objection, leave is granted. Senator O'Neill. Uh, I believe, Senators, that this is simply an oversight in the legislation. Um, the bill currently requires those who engage in mitochondrial research to comply with the national statement on ethical conduct in human research, uh, but it does not require compliance with the Australian Code for Responsible Conduct for Research. Um, however, both are referenced in the government's explanation of how clinical trials work. This amendment simply <coughs> seeks to rectify that oversight. And I do know some senators are concerned that this would prevent the bill from proceeding at all. It is clear that the House is sitting tomorrow, and if the bill were to be turned, returned there for, with this amendment, if it were to be successful, uh, that would give sufficient time for the House to complete the process. So I seek senators' support. Minister. Uh, thanks, Chair. The, uh, the uh, Australian Code for the Responsible Conduct of Research is, is a short principles-based document that articulates the broad principles and responsibilities that underpin the conduct of Australian research. Uh, it's developed jointly, or was developed jointly by the NHMRC, the Australian Research Council and Universities Australia. Adherence to the code is actually a prerequisite for the receipt of funding uh, from the NHMRC and the ARC. Uh, given, uh, given its prerequisite nature in, uh, in that regard uh, and the nature of the code itself, uh, this, uh, this amendment is, uh, is not considered uh, necessary 
uh, to, uh, to the operation of the bill and to ensuring that, uh, that any who operate under the bill uh, would be adhering to the code. So the question is that um, amendments one and two on sheet 1575 by leave as moved by Senator O'Neill be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? Aye. I believe the noes have it. Ring the bells for one minute. Thank you. Lock the doors. So the question is that amendments one and two on sheet one five seven five, as moved by Senator O'Neill, be agreed to. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair. The noes to the left. I appoint Senator Davy as teller for the ayes and Senator Urquhart as teller for the noes. Order, there being 23 ayes and 30 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. Senator O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Deputy President. And, uh, Senators, it, it strikes me as I stand here in the seat where we commenced the week and I struggled to hold um, my composure and honour Senator Kitching um, that I asked for this place to be. Um, to create a living legacy to her memory, that we might find a way to agree and disagree more respectfully. And it's a little ironic that as much as I despair that we're doing a conscience vote at 10 o'clock in a rather expedited way, that I have to observe the nature of the conversation this evening around the room and also the respectful nature of the debate, basically because nobody's arguing. Um, that, <laughs> that we've actually sort of perhaps ended a very fractious right. period right. with, with a little bit of the way in which people might hope we might operate in the future. So uh, I am proud to stand here with you as senators, and I, I also want to very much uh, thank those who have supported the amendments that I've put forward, even though we pretty well knew we were going to go down in the, the count. Um, 
this is a reflection that there is a range of views across the Australian people. We reflect that in what we bring here, and it is, I think, a signature that we bring our perspectives across party lines to represent Australians in the best way that we can. So I appreciate the opportunity for this debate, and I thank you at this late hour for remaining to allow me to advance these amendments. This is the last one. You can share now. So uh, this is actually a bill that acknowledges that adverse events are potentially um, an outcome if this legislation is passed. It's an experimental technology. As I said earlier, it's only one other country that is actually operating this piece of legislation, operating under the auspices of a piece of legislation that allows this kind of research to go on. And it remains today, as we make our decision here this evening, that we do not know. We don't know if there have been successes or failures. We do not know if there have been aberrant results. We don't know anything after six years in the UK. And there are risks embedded in this technology. So this amendment seeks to establish a federal government compensation fund or a similar me mechanism to support any child born with mito disease as a result of the practices that this bill would licence. And I seek your support for that amendment, Senators. Minister. Thanks, uh, thanks Chair. And I thank Senator O'Neill um, for the observations that, uh, that she made uh, before in relation to the conduct of this debate. Uh, the observations uh, that uh, I think I had made at an earlier stage, particularly following the very extensive second reading contributions that were made around the chamber. Uh, debates of this nature uh, do tend to bring out uh, the best uh, of parliamentary contributions, uh, and this bill uh, is a bill that, uh, that does present, on the one hand, uh, the challenge of considering uh, the impacts of medical conditions uh, that have terrible consequences on families and children, uh, and for which the intent of this bill is to seek to avoid those terrible consequences. Equally, uh, it, is, uh, it is a bill uh, that presents ethical challenges and considerations in the construct uh, of the bill uh, and the theories and approaches that are being applied. And, uh, and I uh, know that across the chamber, whichever way senators are voting, uh, that, uh, that they have uh, wrestled in their own way with those ethical considerations, uh, weighing them against, uh, of course, the objectives of the bill uh, to help to ultimately save the lives of children and to provide uh, improved medical outcomes. Uh, in relation, uh, Senator O'Neill, to the uh, final amendment that, uh, that you have moved, uh, which seeks to create a compensation scheme. Um, uh, this is a somewhat challenging amendment that, uh, that you present on the basis that the whole point of, uh, of the bill uh, and the donation techniques is to seek to reduce the risk of transmission uh, of mitochondrial disease. Um, if mitochondrial disease were to be passed on despite the techniques, uh, then, depending on the severity of the disease, uh, the types of supports that would ordinarily have been available to um, uh, parents and families in those circumstances um, would be available, of course, through the health system. Uh, were there but to be um, instances, of course, of, uh, of any evidence of medical neglect, ne negligence or otherwise, uh, then the normal avenues would, uh, would be available. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, but um, it, uh, it is a bill that, uh, that is seeking to ensure uh, very much uh, informed uh, consent, knowledge and, as we have stepped through earlier, uh, the two-stage approach in terms of the um, very extensive trial stage before moving into uh, a clinical phase. Um, the amendment also, in its composition, has some anomalous uh, outcomes in terms of compensation being limited um, to diagnosis when a child is born at birth. Um, whereas uh, symptoms uh, are sometimes only evident at a later stage. Um, compensation also uh, is limited to mothers, um, which, uh, which uh, may not always be uh, relevant in that regard. Uh, and there are uh, areas in which it would deny compensation at the clinical practice stage, um, uh, even though uh, providing for it at, uh, at the trial stage. So, um, uh, Senators, uh, I don't believe that, uh, that this amendment um, would aid in terms of the composition of the bill um, uh, and would uh, encourage uh, the amendment to be defeated, um, but do very much again thank Senator O'Neill uh, for her thoughtful contributions in the debate, um, as I do all senators for the way in which they have engaged during the debate. So the question is that um, 
Amendment 1 on sheet 1577, as moved by Senator O'Neill, be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? Aye. I believe the noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. Lock the doors. So the question is that Amendment 1 on sheet 1577, as moved by Senator O'Neill, be agreed to. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Chandler as teller for the ayes and Senator Urquhart as teller for the noes. Order. There being 20 ayes and 32 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. And just give senators a moment to get back to their seats. The question now is that the bill stand as printed. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? Aye. I believe the ayes have it. The question now is that the bill be reported. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? I believe the ayes have it. <coughs> Report from the Committee of the Whole. The committee has considered the mitochondrial donation law reform MOVES law bill of 2021 and agreed to it without amendments. Minister. I move the report of the committee be adopted. So the question is, the motion is moved by the minister be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? I believe the ayes have it. Minister. I move the bill be now read a third time. So the question is, the motion is moved by the minister be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against? I believe the ayes have it. Division required. Uh, ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors. The question is the third reading be agreed to. Eyes are passed to the right of the chair, nose to the left. I appoint Senator Chandler, teller for the eyes, and Senator Ciccone, teller for the nose. There being 37 ayes, 17 noes, the question is resolved in the affirmative. Clark. A bill for an act to amend the law relating to human cloning and research involving human embryos and for related purposes. And committee memberships. President has received a letter nominating a senator to be a member of a committee. Minister. I seek leave to move a motion to appoint a senator to committees. Is leave granted? There being no objection, leave is granted. Minister. Move that Senator Sheldon be appointed to the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Legislation and References Committee. Question is that motion be agreed to. All those opinions say aye. Against say no. The ayes have it, are we sure? The ayes have it. 
The President has received messages from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that the House has agreed to various bills, that the House concurs in the resolution of the Senate relating to the establishment of a joint select committee on parliamentary standards and of the appointment of members to joint committees. The President has also received messages from His Excellency the Governor-General notifying assent to ten laws, details of which will be incorporated into Hansard. The President has received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the Migration Amendment, strengthening the Character Test Bill 2021 for concurrence. Minister. I move that this bill may proceed without formalities and be now read a first time. The question is this bill will be now read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. For an act to amend the Migration Act 1958 and for related purposes. Minister. I move that this bill be now read a second time and I seek leave to have the second reading speech incorporated in Hansard. Is leave granted? There being no objection, leave is granted. Minister. I move that the debate be now adjourned. The question is that the debate be now adjourned. Those of that opinion say aye. Again, say no. The ayes have it. The President has received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the Veterans Affairs Legislation Amendment Enhanced Family Support Bill 2022 for concurrence. Minister. I move that this bill may proceed without formalities and be now read a first time. The question is that this bill now be read a first time. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Clark. For an act to amend the law relating to veterans' entitlements and military rehabilitation and compensation and for related purposes. Minister. I move that this bill be now read a second time and I seek leave to have the second reading speech incorporated into Hansard. Is leave granted? There being no objection, leave is granted. In accordance with Standing Order 111, further consideration of this bill is now adjourned to 9 May 2022. Minister, you're seeking the call. Mr President, I move that the Senate at its rising adjourn until Monday, 9 May 2022, at 10am, or such other time as may be fixed by the President or, in the event of the President being unavailable, by the Deputy President, and that at the time of meeting so determined shall be notified to each Senator, and that leave of absence be granted to every member of the Senate from the end of the sitting day to the day on which the Senate next meets. I will put that question. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Minister. Mr President, I move that the Senate do now adjourn. <laughs> the question is that the Senate do now adjourn. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. Thank you all.